maybe you kind of give our listeners some more insight into Solana's origin story, how it kind of was started and formed and their initial problem it was trying to solve. Sure. So yeah, I, I mean, the project predates me joining by quite a bit. It started, I want to stay in late 2017. So two of the co-founders, Anatoly Yakovenko, Raj Gokul, kind of saw the landscape of how layer one blockchains were being built. At the time, it was obviously primarily like Ethereum and kind of the first set of use cases were, were starting to get demanded. So like DeFi, a little bit of NFTs. And so they looked at the landscape of what was getting built and felt that there was a big gap in how um, you could build a sort of super scalable system that could add a billion concurrent users in the future um, and wouldn't have any issues with fees or waiting for transactions to clear and, and such. And so they they took a very different architecture approach than what you've seen maybe with ETH2 and some of these other chains like Avalanche, Polkadot, Polygon, etc. So yeah, I think they they raised like a really, really tiny uh, seed round to get started. I think it was like through 500 startups, which is an accelerator in San Francisco. And uh, yeah, just really no one was particularly interested in it at the time, except a few investors, just because the layer one space at the time was either people thought, I think at the time that like Ethereum was kind of the runaway, or they just like had invested in a few competitors, but like there were so many L1s coming out at the time that it kind of got lost in the shuffle. I had heard about it in 2018 or so. And I, I kind of saw some of the benchmark stats that they quoted in the in the white paper. And it was like 65,000 transactions per second. And I was like, yeah, give me a break. Uh, that's not going to work. And so I kind of disregarded it, to be honest, for a few years. And then they actually got to mainnet in uh, 2020 and it worked. And beyond that, not only did it work, but it seemed like kind of a small group of, of validators were getting really, really excited. And sort of a small community was starting to form around the project, which is really what you want to see, right? Because like the best tech doesn't always win. It's just like, you have to have like a go to market, you have to get a community, you know, buy in, you have to kind of start that flywheel. And so that's when I started to get really excited about it and join the team. So yeah, hopefully that's, that's helpful.